Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, visionrecordingstudios.com, and here on my YouTube channel. And today I want to do a quick video to show you how to manually DS a lead vocal. Um, I've got this question a couple of times over the last month on how to do this and how to control the S's um, in a vocal. And I want to show you a way to do it manually as opposed to using a DSer. So let's just take a listen to this lead vocal here. I've just soloed up this female lead vocal. We'll listen to the first couple of phrases and listen. This is completely unprocessed. Um, there is a DSer on here, but it's it's bypassed right now, and I'll show you the DSer in a minute. So this is just a raw track, little re little bit of reverb and delay, but no DSer being used. So here we go. Sleepless through the night and tortured through the day. Every time that we're together, angry words push us away. Okay, so we have a couple of S's and a couple of T's in there that are problematic. So let's just uh, break this down a little bit. Let me zoom out a little. Or zoom in a little, I should say. Sleepless through the night and tortured through the day. Every time that we're together, angry words push us away. So for the, we have some, a couple of uh, T's in there every time and right here in the end. Angry words push us away. Push us away. So now we can just do this with a DSer. One way to do this, whoops, let me get to the right track. And the DSer that I tend to use, and I have a few of them, but this one I tend to like more than any of the other ones. This is by FabFilter, the Pro DS. Let me scroll it down here. Uh, real simple DSer to use. I'm not going to go into how to use this exactly, just because we're going to show you how to manually do this. But uh, what I like is you get the visual graphic display. Sleepless through the night. And you can see where it, where it captures it. The highlighted sections is where the, where the DSer is kicking in, and you adjust the threshold by how quickly you want it to... Um, to grab onto the S's and T's, and then you have a range of how much you want it to. So we're lowering it by about six, seven dB here. I and torture through the day. Every time that we're together, angry words push us away. So you can see it here, push us away. And the DS is doing a good job capturing it. Um, Play that again. Angry words push us away. And you can see up here how much gain reduction is happening during those during that that section. Um, and now if I take away the DSer. Angry words push us away. Okay, so the S's are there. Um, the DSer does a good job. Angry words push us away. But you can still hear the S's still a little bit sticks out a little too much, and it. Whenever you have a DSer that's really overworking, and if you listen to this entire song, this female vocal has S's all over the place. I'm only showing you one small section. What ends up happening is you have to turn the threshold so low that it also makes the rest of the track, to me, sound a little flat. Um, and it just sounds like it gets a little bit too muffled. And so I like to use a DSer very lightly. And when I have a vocal that has a lot of S's in here, instead of using a DSer, here's another way to do it to where you don't have to use a DSer as, as heavy. You can maybe a little bit light DSing, so you're not squashing it so much that you kind of flatten out the rest of the track. So let's going to shut off this DSer. I'm going to close this. I'm going to show you how I can manually go in there and DS. So let's just take a look at this again. Angry words push up. The push, that right there. So if we zoom in, you can say, well, how do you find that? Where do you, where do you look? Okay. If I zoom in on the audio, you can see the audio before it. And a little bit after it, and you can see right in here, scroll this over, right here, this block, this solid block here. And if I zoom in out a little more, you'll see it a little bit more obvious. See how the audio starts to break apart here and it starts to get a little bit more transparent looking on either side. And then you still have this, this block where it's real solid. Oops. That is the S or the T. Let's push up. Push right here. Okay, that's the easiest way to identify it. It's just by zooming in on the audio where it starts to break apart here, okay, and you see the heavy solid block, if you want to call it a block, that's the S. So what you do is you just come in, and again, you can use you can use your, you can zoom in a little bit more to see it a little bit more clearly. Our S is right here. Okay, so we come in with our blade tool, and we cut on either side of it, and then come over here and just take this and bring this down. Usually around four to five dB is usually where I find, usually 
tends to be the most effective. Now if I zoom back out, play that audio again. Words push us so push the S is a lot more, a lot less in your face. Words push us push us push us Okay. There's another one here. Us, us right at the end of the word us. That was the push. This one is going to be the word us. And again, it's right here. You can see it as I start to zoom in on the audio, how the audio before and after the yes gets, you can, it's, I call it transparent. That's probably not the right word for it, but it's obvious on either side of it. And here's the solid block of audio. Here is our S. So if I take this and cut this down, can I start around four to five dB and zoom back out again? So the two areas that we affected were here, and I'll change the color so you can see it a little bit easier. And here, here's where our two S's were. Okay. Let's push us away. See how much softer it is? So let's listen to the whole line before it. Angry words push us away. Okay, as opposed to, let me bring this back to zero, to where we were before. Okay, here's before the manual DSing. Angry words push us away. Okay, listen one more time. Angry words push us away. The push and the us. So now if I just take this, and again, just lower it about, again, I, I usually go about 4 dB to start. You don't want to go too much because then it sounds unnatural and you can tell that the volume is really dropping off. So I start right around 4 dB. Angry words push us away. A lot less in your face, okay? And if, it, if you feel that's a little too much, you can always creep it back up. Okay. Angry words push us away. So basically what we did is we did manually what a de-esser does automatically, but we're just doing it in individual spots. And I tend to like to do this more before I even start processing. So I take the complete, one of the first things I do when I start with a mix is I import all my audio, get everything color coded and organized. And then I go over to the, to the lead vocal and I solo up the lead vocal and I'm listening for the, all those S's and T's. And I do a lot of this before I even start doing any processing on the tracks at all. Try to get the vocal to have the least amount of S's in there possible. And then at the end, after I've added some compression, I've added some EQ, and it'll tend to brighten up the vocal, you don't have that big sibilance problem. And then if I have to use a de or after the fact, I'm using it very lightly, and it tends it to make it sound more natural than a de or just squashing down on, a, on an S or a T. And again, if you have a vocal where you don't have a lot of S's and a lot of T's, and you don't have a lot of problematic areas, you can just use a de or and not even do this. But on this particular vocal, this vocal has a ton of these S's and T's in there. I'm only showing you a couple of examples. So I went in and manually going to trim it all up and then put a, a light de on at the end. And it's a way to just easily get rid of a real bad S. Sometimes the S or the T is so bad that even a de doesn't capture it enough. So this is another way to do it. So let's see if there's one more maybe spot we can take a look at. You made it look so easy. Another one, easy. So again, just zoom it out. And I could see it instantly. Here it is right here. Go in, cut on either side of it, lower it. Again, I start right around 4 dB. Zoom back out. Let's listen to that line again. Looks so easy. A lot, lot more natural sounding. Looks so easy. You did it for the thrill. But I can't forgive and I won't forget this tainted love is a bit of hell. Forget this tainted love. St, st, hear it? You can do this on T's as well. But again, zoom out. And it's right in here. Let's see where it is exactly. This tainted love. Right there. So you can hear it. You can see it. It makes it really quick, really easy. Forget this tainted love is a bit of pill. So that is how you manually DS a vocal. And again, you can do this with a DSer, um, but I don't tend to, if I have a real problematic vocal, I like to use a DSer at the end very lightly um, and not have to have it work so hard. And I do this process before I do any processing on the vocal at all. I do this in its raw state. Listen to that vocal, find out if there's a lot of S's and T's or a lot of, a lot of those. A lot of those types of sounds 
and bring them down manually, then start my processing. I tend to find this happens a lot more with female vocals than male vocals. Um, and there's a million reasons why the de -esser happens and why, why, why the S's are so prominent. It's everything from the, the, the style of singer to the microphone that was used, how it was EQ'd on the way in, so on and so forth. So that's just a quick tip for you, how to manually de a vocal. Um, for more tips, tricks, and training on mixing, mastering, and all that good stuff, head out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And for more um, information on my services for mixing and mastering, you can head over to visionrecordingstudios.com. And until next time, this is David Vignola with homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I'll speak to you all soon. Take care.